but her first career was in elementary education. She always loved Fridays with her sixth grade class because that was the day she always did art with her students. And no matter what part of the curriculum she taught, whether it was math or uh, social studies or language arts, she always included uh, some art and creativity on Fridays. Getting to know Sue, I found out that Sue doesn't do anything halfway. Another of Sue's passions is running. She started running from neighbors. No, that's not running from neighbors. That's uh, running with neighbors. Uh, and found uh, that she delighted both in the speed and the distance uh, running. Her first marathon attempt in 1979 qualified her to run in the Boston Marathon. I'm amazed. Uh, she and a friend went on to found a women's racing team that still thrives today. Let me tell you a little bit more about Sue and her art. Once she retired from teaching in 1998, she decided to pursue her passion for art by taking community college classes, entering shows, and joining the California Watercolor Association. She found both support and lasting friendship in the CWA, and she was president from 2004 to 2007. She's now a master signature member of CWA and a signature member of the San Diego Watercolor Society, the Watercolor West, and the Missouri Watercolor Society. She's won numerous awards and she also has paintings on display at the Open Room Gallery in Ketchum, Idaho. Sue is drawn to subjects that evoke a mood or tell a story. She focuses on the way light plays on and defines her subjects. Both travels around the world and walks around the corner inspire her paintings. I know you're all eager to see Sue paint, so let us welcome Sue Johnston. Sue? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Idaho. <laughs> you're going to get to spend an hour and a half up here and um, hope you're enjoying some little less smoky weather. We are getting that way, too, and I know you guys have been struggling, so hope it works out for you as it's looking like it's going to for us. I want to say thank you to CWA for inviting me to share this opportunity with you to share what I do, and I hope you enjoy that time. Um, I especially want to say thank you to all the CWA board, um, in particular for this situation. I want to thank Michelle, Pat, and Joe for tutoring me for months now on how to do this thing. If you just tune into a Zoom meeting, you think, oh, this is just fine. The person there is talking and blah, blah, blah. And no problem. There's a lot is involved in doing this. And without their help, I, well, you wouldn't be seeing me tonight. So I hope, um, yeah, I hope that works out for you and you enjoy it. Um, I also want to uh, quote a friend of mine and a friend of many of yours, my friend Ruth Miller, who says it takes a village, and it certainly does. You can't begin to understand how much work it takes for any or organization, but in particular, we're talking about CWA, how much work it takes to give you the opportunity to meet with artists and their skill and learn from friends, neighbors, all those people in the community, the art community, um, without CWA board members. And so it's imperative that you, if you want to be a part of something special, you need to be a part of it by getting involved with it. And um, for me, that was in 19, hmm, I think when I retired, 19, 98, but 1999, by that time, I met some CWA people and they had encouraged me to get involved. And eventually I did. And it's just been the best thing ever. I don't know what I do without all those wonderful art connections of friends, 
skilled people with wonderful skills, um, just the whole community. So uh, that's my plug. I think you should get involved if you haven't, but you're thinking about it, think about it now. Um, so I guess we should start. What do I have to tell you before I do that? I think that's um, it. Okay, we will uh, re re spotlight your um, camera so we can see you paint. Okay. And um, if people have questions, they can uh, either ask you directly or they can put them in the chat and then I'll ask them when a moment presents itself. So um, I'll show you this photo to begin with. Um, this is a pretty boring photo as far as I'm concerned. When I looked at it later, I thought to myself, why did you ever paint this thing? I did paint it um, and it came out looking more like this, although on your screen it probably looks pretty gray. Anyway, I entered it into the Fallbrook Art Show earlier this year, and I really loved it by the time I was finished with it. And so I was looking forward to getting it back home, and lo and behold, somebody bought it. So then I thought, well, shoot, I want that painting. So I did another version, uh, I'll show you later. And um, when I was asked to do this workshop, I thought, well, what in the hell am I gonna do? And I thought, well, okay, I've done this twice. And each time I do it, it comes out differently and never like this. Um, so I thought, well, I might as well give you, give it a shot and show you how I did this. And um, so anyway, that's where we're gonna start. I'm gonna start by making the drawing. First off, um, I did a no tan of this. Actually, I did two no tans, if you can see them here. Um, each one is slightly different. I kind of like this one better because I like the way the light points toward these grasses here. What this is, is in a, it's in a place called Silver Creek in Idaho, which is a beautiful uh, um, nature preserve. Um, this place where, where Hemingway used to always go and paint and not paint, but hike and shoot and fish. And so it's really beautiful. And this place here is a very quiet portion of Silver Creek, which is in a big flat plain with giant mountains behind it. And but the creek winds through it and it's it's really pretty. So one time we were driving down there and I saw this quiet corner. And it just made me feel so tranquil and quiet. And it's one of those kind of places in a stream where you might run across it and think, oh, that's so pretty. What can I do with it? So anyway, that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, I have a very limited palette. I think Michelle put that on um, onto um, an email. You may have seen it. I'll mention the palette when we get to that um, and talk about that. You might describe a little bit uh, what a no tan is in case um, yeah. some well, people are not I, that. I'm familiar. stealing from Stephen Barry, who did such an excellent job of talking about um, no tans and how to do them. Um, and he did a presentation for CWA about what, four months ago, maybe? I don't remember. Anyway, mm -hmm. he did an excellent job. And uh, like many of you, probably have struggled with different instructors saying, oh yeah, just do a no tan of it, whatever, and this is what I'm gonna do. And they scratch out something that looks really great and you try to do it and doesn't really happen. So anyway, I watched him to see what he did and I thought he did an excellent job of really breaking it down into black and white. And so looking at an image that you're interested in doing and trying to define your design and your shapes um, and putting them down on a piece of paper so you have sort of a road map to work from. So I did this one and one of the things that was neat that he also talked about if you missed it was he um, did simply black and white which this was and, and it still is. But then he said, here's another thing you can do. If you didn't get enough white in it where you wanted it, there is a pen and it's called a, I'll see if I can put it up for you. If not, it's Signo. Can you see that? Yeah. Signo Uniball. 
So I went down to the local art store in Haley, Idaho. <laughs> Believe it or not, we have one. And um, they happen to have one. And it's just the best thing. I'm going to show you what. See this black part here. Maybe you can see this. I'm going to put a mark in there. A white. And it, it works. It really works. So I'm just going to mess this up. So if you thought you only had black and the paper white, but you wanted to add some more to it, this is a neat thing to get, if, and they're they're cheap. So go to your local art store and get a Uni Ball Signo Broad. It's S I G N O. Anyhow, so I did this, and now what I'm going to do is uh, begin the piece on this piece of paper. It's just a quarter sheet um, in order to try and make it in the hour and a half I've got. So I'm gonna do um, a light sketch, just a simple sketch of the image. I mean, what I should talk about this, what, what drew me to this whole thing is this point here, where this, this cattail was crashing into the water and then there's a reflection going down like that. And then there's another one coming. And there's, so there's these Vs pointing, obviously they're pointing off the page, but this one in particular brings you back into this part, which is a pile of cattails that have fallen down into the water and collected um, when the stream is moving. And so it brings you back and then all of these lines from the cattails and the reflections in the water keep your eye moving around. And so that's what I was focusing on when I started and what I really liked about this photo, not particularly the the photo itself but but this point these points here so so when you have the two no tans up there yeah um, which one are you going to be using well i can't say one that over gonna, the other yeah it's going to be they're pretty close this one i like this part here so i'm going to try to keep that happening okay and, um, actually they're both, I'm happy with both of them. Uh, okay. They're close enough that it doesn't matter that much, I don't think. So, and about how long would do you uh, spend doing a no tan? Oh, it only takes like 10 minutes or something. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, you can take it, you can stretch it out and you can get lost in it, which is a nice thing too. Um, I have other ones in here. Um, let's see. Yeah, like this one was... Uh, just recently and I just did it from a photo that I had on my phone and of something in our area. And it turned out to be really nice because you can fool around with it. If you don't like what you've got, you can mess it up, start over until you get the design you want. And this one just happened to work because I like the way this goes from here to here and then moves around. So anyway, I don't need, that was down in Cary, Michelle, for your information. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm just going to make a few light lines here on the paper. And then because there's a lot of white in there, uh, well, important whites that I want to save and they're really thin, I'm going to use some um, resist. And I recently took a workshop from um, Charles Rouse. Some of you may know him or have taken the workshop. And he, uh, he uses a lot of resist. And in this case, he showed us all his little kit, which I immediately decided to copy. Um, and so I had a couple of little spice jars. And one of them, this one, has nothing in it but some water, a little dish soap, and what leftover stuff from other times. The resist is in here. And then there's a bar of soap and the sponge. And the resist that I'm using, excuse me, I'm gonna move a minute, is, um, I should have gotten this out, darn it. Where is it? Um, the brand is PBO. If you don't know that name, here it is. Um, and I had been using a different resist when I do use it, and I don't use it all that much, but the one I was using before had a much lighter color. And so you may have had this experience where you put resist on and once you've done it, you really can't see where it is unless you 
um, take it to the light or something, tip it out but the wind or something. But with this PBO, the blue really works. And so it's easy for you to see where it is and how to use it. So the other thing is this brush, I can't tell you what it is, <laughs> where it came from. You know how you get those little funny kits sometimes when you're first starting out and it has a brush in it and it has some paints in it and it almost is a paint by number deal. I think this is where this came from. But what I like about it is that it has a really nice point to it. And it's, it's very small. I think it's a number two, it's a number two. Uh, which means that I can get um, some pretty thin lines not as good as some people, I'm still working on it, but um, thin enough that um, it works to reserve the places you want white. So anyway, to do this, you just dip the brush in, of course, in the water. Then I go into this soapy-ish water and then rub it off on the sponge just to make sure that I get that good point. I go back in again, Go back into the into soap, roll it in soap, because you want to have soap on the brush before you stick it in the resist. And the resist is right here. So once you've done that, you've got a nice enough point, you begin to create a line, which I'm going to do now. Um, and this one is an important one because it goes in a, to a reflection down in the water. I'm going to bring it this way. And I'll tell you now that I have done um, any number of these, just kind of practicing to how to do this to show you. Uh, sorry. Um, and they all come out differently, each one. Um, so I haven't, you know, exhausted the theme really because it, I could do it forever and each one will be different. And the other thing is trying to keep it so that it's uh, clear. I mean, not, not too fat, which is kind of hard to do, but, and I'm not good at it, but, oh gosh, sorry. Well, you don't see my arm, so you don't know. I just put my arm in some Quinburn orange and it's all over my arm now. It's fresh paint, so, oh well, never mind. So um, you once you think that you've maybe got too much resist or not enough risk, resist, you repeat the process and you keep doing that until you are happy with the lines and the places that you want to make sure are not going to be covered by paint. Now, funny thing about these cattails is that they have all these, the shaft from them when the wind blows starts flying all over the place, which it has done in the photo that I'm using. Um, and so uh, that was an important part of the picture. Um, if you look at this again, let's see, can you see it? All these white spots look kind of boring, but they're actually really important to the painting. So, so, yeah. so all the very light um, reads you're putting in there now. Yeah. Well, I'm just, yeah, some of the white ones that stay white, I'm going to just put a little bit of a line to indicate them. And then also the water lines. There's two water lines here. There's a, a high water up here. And then there's another one down here. So and there's an interesting space between them. And so, for instance, the reflections start coming down. And I like to think about the reflection lines as dancing with your brush. I just kind of hold it at the top end and, you know, bring it down very lightly, hopefully lightly. And then um, there's some stuff over here. Uh, let me see. I, I love that analogy, dancing with the brush. I like that. Yeah, I do. With this painting, I tend to use the the top end of the brush. I don't know, you see a shadow there. I'm sorry about that. We tried, but I'm holding it here, not up here, like, boom, I gotta get this just right. Cause it doesn't make any difference with this. It's water and grasses and they have a personality of their own, right? They're, I can't 
So you're shooting for loose. Yeah. And I don't want to put a whole lot in of uh, the lines. You'll see when I come to remove the resist, I'll just warn you, you'll probably go, it looks horrible. Because it will, because some of this is thicker than I want it to be. But then that's where the 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 job comes is to get rid of all that uh, thickness and 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 to bring it to its final final appearance. So anyhow, so there's one here. There's a line here. You don't want them all standing up like soldiers because of course they don't. Uh, we took a beautiful hike today um, where I live. There's a place that is a, a nature preserve and it's um, the Wood River uh, Nature Preserve. Along the river, uh, there's cattails in one area that are just going as far as the eye can see and then surrounded by mountains and they have some a walking uh, path and um, benches so you can sit there and look at cattails and see the water behind them and watch the birds flying all over the place and it's it's just a beautiful place uh, so we had a nice hike there this morning and uh, took a lot of pictures didn't stop long enough to paint but that'll come maybe tomorrow <laughs> I don't know no so that's about enough of that. I want to define where this line ends on the, where the grass, the cattails are lining up against the river. And then a few lines down here to indicate some reflections in the water. And the nice thing about Pibio, Pibio as Charles Rouse says, calls it, is it, it dries really fast. So I don't have to worry too much about, okay, I, I'm doing this now. So now what am I going to do that it's done? I got to wait and wait, you know, no, you don't have to wait at all. It um, is, by the time I finish with this part, it's going to be dry or dry enough that I can move on to the next phase of this painting. So the painting part is going to be pretty much a wet and wet, um, and I will be turning this over shortly and wetting the whole paper on the back, not on the front. And uh, when I do it properly, the paper will stay wet for over an hour, close to two hours. Um, and as it starts to dry slightly, it, it just, uh, makes it easier to move into getting a little thicker paint and so on. We'll talk about that as I go. So that's enough for right now. Actually, yeah, it is. I, maybe a couple more lines. There's some cute little bits like that. And like that. They're actually in the photo, there's there's line after line of line of reflection because of, you know, the, the number of reads that are there. But anyway, I'm not going to put them all in. I can make so in, in the no tan, uh, there's also a lot of white in the lower right quadrant um, that is like ripples, but you're not putting those in at this no, time. You, you mean the ro lower left, this part right here? Yeah. Yes. I yeah. did do that here in the original painting. I did that, and you can see that it. If I hold it up, you can see that that's pretty contrived, because I was using a different resist and it was thick, okay. and I didn't model it very well. Um, and in subsequent practices, I used. Um, I didn't do that. I just went to the, the blue color, which is um, uh, more dominant on the bottom and, and then worked in between it. So that's, that's kind of the way I'm gonna go with that. So okay. It's paint off my arm and then I, okay. And do you do anything to keep track of where you are when you're doing the resist or do you just kind of just look at it overall? And I'm just looking at the photo overall, trying to 
indicate some of the, the light sh from the shaft. I don't um, want to put a whole lot in because it, when you make these dots, unless I'm going really carefully, which I'm having a hard time doing here because of time, and doing this, teeny tiny dots. Let's see if I can get one there. You know, that takes a while to get those in. So yeah. I'm kind of trying to cut out some of that time. But okay. I'm doing it, so I'll do a few more. There's some over here, actually, just a few little lines. So anyhow, um, let's see, where's my paint? I've got to clean this brush off. So back to that. So clean it off before I put everything away. Um, use the towel to uh, make sure that you got all the resist off of it. Do it one more time, just to be sure. Go through the sponge, put that away. We're done. So I'm gonna put the lids on these things. This is from Spice of Life. <laughs> there it is. Some work <laughs> in uh, Pasta Robles doing, going to a, um, uh, a, a trip. And there was a place where they were selling these samples and I had some, so I thought, aha, perfect thing for that. Okay. So, so um, can you actually splatter with PBO or not? Yes, you can. You definitely can. Um, in fact, is it a good idea? Let's put it that way. <laughs> good idea. I wish I thought to do it before I put this stuff away because I could have. That's okay. Um, it's just, you know, yeah. just that wanted yeah. to, you know, it's to very, it. What happens is what, in order to prepare this, um, and this is the way I was taught, you strain the bottle of fluid through a strainer, like anything from your kitchen into a jar and I did that into a empty jar in my kitchen. And then you add about a third more of plain water. So you've got a mixture of this thickness plus the water. And so it's thinned out quite a lot. And so um, it would be easy to it, sprinkle it or spray it with that, you know, doing that. Um, and when I first started trying this, I thought, oh my God, it's not gonna, that can't possibly be working as a resist, but a miracle, it does. So um, even when you think you've got it too thin, it's not too thin, it'll work just fine. So, okay, so we got the drawing, we got the um, resist on, when it, I'm touching this, it's fine. I can feel a few damp, cooler places on the paper, which tells me that some places haven't dried that much. So I'm just gonna set this aside. This is a piece of gator board, and it's a small piece that I cut from a larger piece um, because I'm gonna water, wet the back of this completely. And I'm gonna wet this also. And then when I've done both and I put it down, it will stay and stick to, to the gator board for two hours like I did today. If I do it, if I get it wet enough. So we're gonna start with the board and I'm just gonna put water on it. And it has to be, you have to make sure that you get to the corners and it takes a couple of uh, weddings on the paper to do that. And I should have put this aside for a minute and do it here. So I'm going to just start watering the paper. And I guess, I don't know if you can see this. You have to take my word for it. It's getting wet. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can see it. Um, so that's the back of the paper. The shine on it, yeah, that you will looks, know. It looks very wet. Yeah. Well, the main thing that's important is to make sure that you get the edges totally wet. And I'm using some pressure with the brush to make sure that happens um, because it won't stick flat to the gator board until you put this pressure on and you make sure that you've got your edges really wet. So I'm going back and forth on it as much as I can. 
And when I put it on, it may roll up a little bit. That tells me there's a place that's not wet and not not wet enough. So I'm bringing this back. Um, put it down. Whoops. Oh dear. There's that. Can you see this red stuff here? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a new color coming onto this painting. It's on my <laughs> finger, and I'm not getting it off. I, you know, fresh stuff. Anyway, let's see there. Then just take your fingers and go around the edges, making sure that you've got this firmly placed down. Okay. Did a pretty good job, so it's sticking. That's good. So um, about this little guy here, since it's there, I might as well get rid of it. And this is, um, a lot of you may have discovered this by now. I'm sure everybody's heard of Mr. Clean. There he is. And you know him from your kitchen work. But they've just come out with this new thing, which is great, and they're sheets. And they're, oh, wow. I haven't seen those before. They're super thin. And the neatest thing about them of all is that you can tear them. And then you have smaller pieces. So you can adjust it depending upon what you need. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff in the corner because I don't want it. And now this is a real staining color that happened on my arm and got to this paper. So it probably won't come off completely. But um, like there, that's pretty good. And when you do this, if you haven't done it before, don't freak out because you'll see all these little crumbs floating on the top when you're doing it. And you think, oh my God, I'm taking the paper apart, but you're not because it's not the paper, it's the crumbs from the sheet, from the Mr. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, okay, so that was a good rest because you can see maybe that this is a little, is lifting a little. So I'm gonna just go oh, back yeah. in one more time, make sure it's down there and stays down there. And on the other side too, all right, that should be enough. Juanita is wondering if you find that the blue tape throws off your eye. Well, you know what? I don't know, Juanita, because this is, I had to put some tape on these boards once I cut them down to the size I wanted. And uh, I haven't used it yet. And the blue tape around the, unless you mean the blue tape around where we are on the table which we put that there to figure out how to make everything work straight with the screen and the stuff. So I don't know, I don't think so, I hope not, we'll see. So I'm gonna start with, um, this is a pro art brush and um, they come from England, but you can go online to pro art, P-R-O-A-R-T-E and um, Proline Plus 007. <laughs> this is a number 20 brush. And so I'm going to start with big washes. Um, and I'm only using um, cobalt blue. And I'm going to make a puddle of it to start with. Uh, is that a natural bristle or uh, um, synthetic? Um, it's a synthetic. Yeah, but it's a really good brush. It's got a good snap and it just it just works great. So that was, I filled my palette in a couple of places today. So I've got a couple of, couple of wells that are a little thick. So they're gonna just need some more water to help them out. So I'm gonna use cobalt and um, I'm gonna use um, yellow ochre. And that's all to start with. And this really should have more water in it. So I'm just going to add a little. Yeah. And uh, I should say something about this palette. It's super neat. It's uh, made by a company named Majeo, and which is a Korean, South Korean company. They make paint and they make palettes. And the neat thing about this palette is when you close it, it seals all the moisture in. So your paint stays wet longer. 
and uh, I find it, I'm finding it that I use it more and more. I used to use a Robert E. Wood and um, I use it for big paintings, but small paintings, I don't really need such a big palette unless I'm adding weird colors. But the other neat thing about this is that it has an extra dish. So I've got, if I do this, you can see, there's this one, this one, and then if I really need more stuff, I can use this as well. Otherwise, I just keep it in there and it keeps everything fresh. So um, I've got enough blue. I'm gonna add some, um, another, damn it, I don't want that to get in there. Anyway, oh, I have to keep bumping into this arm that's taking the picture. Um, okay, so here's the yellow ochre. It's going to go in there and it's got some blue on the brush, so it's going to be a little messy to start with, but I'll fix that. Add some water. Feed the puddle, as my friend Karen Fry always says. Mm -hmm. Feed the puddle. Don't be stingy, Sue. <laughs> so it's not going to be a good yellow at the moment, but we'll get there. Okay, so when I look at the photo, when I look at the Notan, the Notan, I don't know if it really shows it as well as I want it to, but you can see that there's a lot of dark up here and also dark down here. So I'm gonna start with the blue for the darks. And then I'm gonna move into the yellows down below. It doesn't really matter. This is wet behind, and you know that when you're putting color on wet paper and uh, the paint is thick, it's not thick, it's thin, eventually when the paper starts to dry, the color is going to be lighter than, than when you start out. So if you are new to this whole routine, I don't know that. Uh, you needn't worry uh, because if it looks really dark and you don't want it dark, it's going to be a lot lighter as soon as it dries. So um, I'm just going to do the blue to start with. And I'm going to go back in underneath this. There's a really dark passage. Um, and so this is just a reminder of it. And you can see that I just made a drop of it. Doesn't really matter. It's just there. Um, and it's going to get a little thinner here, but it's also going to get darker coming down here. And um, just a ways, I'm going to get a little wet, move it over, move it here, this way. And let me see here. Let's see, I'm going to bring the blue down, down to the bottom as well, because that's where this lighter reflected light is going to be. And I don't need to do a whole lot with it, just enough to suggest that color now. And I can move my brush around. And with this one, I'm using the end as well. I'm not doing, um, I'm not holding it up close, or at least I'm trying not to, so. Um... There's also some blue marks in here. They're all gonna turn green eventually. And so here, and I don't think I want that one there. I'll pick that out just a little bit. All right, that's enough to start with. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get into the yellow. And this part here definitely is gonna have yellow in it. So I'll just throw some of that in there. Um, where this ends, I want it to be yellow. Some more, I wanna make sure that I get this light yellow coming down here. I'm gonna to have to get some clean water pretty quick too. 
Is is yellow ochre interchangeable with raw sienna? Do you yeah, ever use raw sienna? I answer. I hardly ever use raw sienna, so I, I can't answer that. Maybe somebody who's listening can. Um, that one, I don't know. My colors are pretty much the same all the time. Uh, and I'll tell you what they are. Cobalt. All the blues, cobalt, ultramarine, peacock, and thalo. I can just call it thalo blue. Mm -hmm. um, over here is um, rust or quinburn orange. It's quinburn orange and Daniel Smith, and it's rust in, in M. Graham. And most everything here is M. Graham. So uh, rust or thalo, quinburn orange, alizarin crimson. For this painting, those two, um, I probably will not go into the oranges. I'll go to Quinn Gold and um, maybe a little Azo Orange. It depends on how I feel about it. The other thing, the only other paint that I might go into is, um, it's a purple. And I've found that I love it for making really good darks. It's this one, it's an M. Graham. And it's uh, it's called dioxine, I think, dioxine purple. Anyway, it's a great color for making some good dark. So I'll probably oh, use that. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, just to start in color and enough of it, and so it's still really wet, of course. And I'm going to go in with some really. Uh, thicker paint in a minute. Um, but before I do, just for fun, uh, I'm going to use a razor and just draw some lines that will show up later. And um, this is a you know flat razor with a smooth edge on the other end so you don't stab yourself. And um, just make some wiggly lines to replicate the reflections. A few here, maybe something there. Just trying to replicate how these grasses grow. And um, okay, that's enough. No, maybe not. Maybe a little bit more. All right. So now I'm going to get darker. So to do that, I'm going to get some of this water out of here, out of the blue. And so I'm going to kind of mop that up. That's enough. And I'm going to start to go into darks, even while it's still wet. And even if I do that, it's going to get once it dries, it'll still be kind of light, but eventually I'll have to probably use a hair dryer and get some fresher water. Do you, you ever use an X-Acto knife or slice tool instead of a straight edge razor blade? Um, you know what? I have used an X-Acto, but I kind of like the straight edge and so I just, you know, it's, it's there, it's easy to grab when I want it. So, but they do the same thing. I mean, I think the X-Acto maybe is a little sharper and maybe make deeper cuts, but I don't know that for sure. Michael Friedland, are you there? Maybe he knows. He's pretty much an expert at things like that. I am here. All right. And what was the question about a, a, a an exacto blade? Yeah, would I? I've never used one. Have you? In terms, instead of a razor, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah. I think that the straight edge razor that you have, the single edge razor, mm -hmm. does a good job. I'd be a little afraid of an exacto cutting the paper. Of course, yeah. that That's razor right. could do it That's too. Pretty much mm -hmm. what I think too. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. 
But sometimes people take the edge of a, an old credit card to make those kind of yeah. collections and oozles and things. All right. I've done that before, too. I just haven't done it lately. I was going through some stuff and I found the razor and I thought, oh, I haven't done this lately. So why not use it? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now is I'm building up a black or much thicker paint. Darker. And what are the colors that go into that? So this is rust here. And this is thalo blue here. It's blue color. It's not the red or the green. It's just the plain blue. Okay. Um, a little more cobalt. And I think I want to put some um, alizarin crimson in this. And um, now I'm going to need to get a little more water. Because I don't want that. Okay, so that's pretty brown. I don't really want it brown. I want it more blue. So that's, that looks pretty good to start with. So I'm just going to start over here because this corner is pretty much the darkest part of the entire painting. And I'll probably have to go back over it a couple of times because this paint paper is so wet right now. But um, this is where I always begin with this thing. And you'll begin to see the resist showing through. Um, along the edge of the, where all of the cattails have fallen down is uh, black pretty much, or very dark anyway. So um, I have to try to keep my brush out of water, which is, because I'll just make it too thin. Uh oh, there's that stuff again, good Lord. <laughs> I have. I refreshed the rust today in the afternoon. And with M. Graham paint, if you haven't used it before, it's um, binders honey and, and it takes a long time for it to dry and settle. Um, and so it's really wet right now. And if I get even remotely near it, I get a big bunch of it. So anyhow. Hmm. So the M. Graham paint, because of the honey, it takes longer to dry, huh? Exactly. And actually, it'll stay wet for a long time. I mean, we can talk days, weeks. I mean, it, it, it's never completely, um, hmm. you know, uh, dry. Not like other paints, really. You know, some of them turn to rocks. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. You're, if you're not taking care of them. Yeah. So anyway, this is going to be this side is dark. It comes down here. Um, these points are important. And I'm, I'm just painting over the resist on them right now. But that that point right there. And well, we'll go down to the water in a minute. But there's some lines in here that I need to put in. Um, and dark places there. Can, can you um, lower your um, painting and then lower the photo so we can see the reference photo a little bit better? Looks like you got a little space that to pull the painting down and then- How about that? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, but I'll, I'm gonna do it with the, um, well, I'll do it with this. I'll just prop it on that. Can you see it there? No, it has to be kind yeah, of flat, a, a fl flatter, a little bit on. Okay. All right. Flatter for yeah. us to get. But. Okay, so we've got some darks in there. I'm going to go back into uh, this time Quinn Gold because um, I don't want the whole thing to be black up there. There's got to be some color and some light coming through. I might have to get some help from Mr. Clean on that in a little bit, but uh, for right now, um, I'll do it that way. And what colors are you putting in there? Quin gold. And um, I'll probably do some Quin burn orange. I'll do it right now. It's just pure, pure color to get some. Is there good a green in there? Not yet. Um, the green is pretty much going to come from the blue and the yellow. I see. I, I, I'm not putting in a, 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 a tube green. I practically never use those things. I see. Yeah. So anyhow, there's some color there. I'll let it sit for a little bit because we have to come down to here to mirror that dark up there. And um, 
I see it. Yeah. Bring it across. It actually goes all the way across. Um, and it's thicker on this side. I'm going to put some blue in that, some cobalt. Cobalt was the other one that I filled today, another thick color. So. Okay, there we go. to make sure that I get those shadows in there. And here a bit. So now this comes down here. You see that in the paint photo? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, okay. I don't want to I want to remember that I want that path, so I just covered it up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to wipe some of that out a little bit. So it, it's not so prominent. And let me see, down here, there's a little bit. And down here, over the top of the, the reflected light in the water. And then there's some here. Some over here. And... Uh, this way. All right. Um, oh, another here is really important. And yeah, let me see where it is. It's right here. So I know where the resist is. So I think I do. Um, <laughs> and I know where it has to be dark. Um, and I'm sorry that you can't really see that right now, but I hope you'll get it when we get there. There's a um, place there, this piece here, this piece of it here, switch brushes in a minute. And I'm gonna go back and do some of that yellow again, down in here. So this time though, I'm gonna use the uh, Quinn Gold Mix it in with the um, yellow ochre that we have already on the palette. I bring it in here a little bit more. And here, right in between. Another place so we keep that path open slightly like this. Adding some water in here and getting some of the some more cobalt over here. Um, let me go back in with this blue a little bit. Again, I'm just using the edge of the brush, the top part of the brush. You can see that I'm holding it that way. Mm -hmm. So I could just get me some. Reflected lines coming in a little bit better. You making the brush dance again? I am doing a dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more here. This is going to be getting greener in here and cloudier. So um, let me see, where are we? How are we doing with time? Who's the timer in this crowd? Um, let's see. Uh, we've it's uh, eight twenty California time, so we've got another forty minutes. Okay, that's good. We're good. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm going to do the hair dryer. So you have to tell me again how to do what do I have to do so that they don't get blasted out of here. What do I turn yes. off? You're going to have to mute your uh, computer mic. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll do that, but I'm not ready to do it quite yet. So okay. I want to get some yellow in here because this part up here actually is higher than this part down here. I mean, the, the landscape uh, begins here and then the water is kind of like, oh, I see. see what's happening. Yes. So in a way, I'm going to want to lift out, actually, after I put all that dark in, I want to lift some out um, to give the sense of going back slightly from what's over here and the other thirds. Okay. And then maybe draw a line in there or something. Um, so I want to put some yellow in here. Where is it? Go back yellow. And then I'm going to go over that with the blue and start to get a little more in the green, green zone here. Um, a little more in here. Oh, I did it again. I keep forgetting about that space I want to keep. And let's see. And I'll get some more of that blue. Let's go do the yellow instead. It's awful quiet out there. Is there anybody watching? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, indeed. It's shaping up beautifully, Sue. Okay. Well, that's good. Now, we can take a, a break while you dry it, too, if you want to take a five or ten minute break. No, oh, it's going to take five minutes or less to do. So. Okay. If you want to do that and make any announcements or anything, that's okay. Um, so. I don't know that I have any announcements to make, but um, if stop. people need a, a bio break or anything like that, it might be a good time for them to okay. you know, grab a glass of wine or... Uh, ah! Oh, or, I talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you you get one after you're done. <laughs> uh, I think I will. Yeah. I'm just going to put another layer of the black here. And I want to make it so it kind of runs. So I'm going to let it do this. So here's a good question for you. Um, uh, Ingrid asks, is it because you wet the paper on the back that you can keep working into the wet paint without getting blooms? Absolutely. That's why it can do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good to know. It, try it. It's neat. I've done it before. Um, I've done a lot of abstract landscapes that way. And I've actually done some where I did both sides of the paper. I started out doing them with both the sides of the paper soaking wet uh, and uh, doing a wet and wet procedure. But somewhere along the way, I guess I got lazy. I don't know. I thought, well, I'll just try it and I'll do it on the back and see what happens. And lo and behold, it turned out to be really cool. So wow. it works fine and I didn't have to do as much work with wetting. So that reminds me that sometimes, well, if I'm doing a big piece, I will um, wet both sides and I'll use uh, carpet tacking around the edges and staple it to the board, to this board here. Oh. And when it all dries, it dries flat and hard. And, oh. and it's a nice way to work if you're working with something that requires a lot of time and, uh, you know, days and not, a, not an hour and a half affair like this. So, so I, yeah. I stepped away in the beginning. Did you only wet the back of the paper and did you really soak it? Yeah, are you going out for an extra glass of wine, Michael? Is that why you stepped no, away? I, I had to run out for a minute. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I wet the back of the paper and also I wet the gator board. Okay. Um, and so they're both very wet and so they stick to each other, which is a really nice thing. Yeah. So what, right now what I'm doing is I'm just, before I go to dry this, this is a super cheap tool 
If you haven't found them before, you can get them in any craft store. They're a, a Royal Langle Nickel. I think that's the way it's said. And they are, these ones are Menta. Anyway, they've got a beautiful chisel edge on them. You can get them on flat. I'm trying to see how to show you that. Can you see the, sh the chisel? Yes, uh huh. We, we <laughs> could see it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm losing you. I'm, I'm just dying to know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> yeah, it's really stiff and hard. Okay, so I can go back in here and draw a line that's not going to abrade the paper like the razor will. Um, and when this paint is a little bit drier, it's a nice way to, um, you know, bring back some lights that you want to have. Like, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. You can get them in any craft store. And I've got a whole bunch of them there. Um, some of, most of them are straight across, but I like this, this uh, angled one. It, it works really nice for this kind of thing. And, and what's it called? Is there a brand well, or a name? Or? The brand is Royal and Langnickel. Um, I don't know. Can you see that? Not really. It's Not a little too close. Too that be, doesn't help. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, they have this blue edge and stock blue mm -hmm. metal. And um, they work neat. So you can get. Will it work even if the paint is all the way dry or does it have to be partly wet? No, that's a good question. It, would, it works really good when the paint is dry, especially when the paint is thick like it is over here. Huh. But once it's dry, and it's not going to do it. It'll do it right now. But what's going to happen is it'll start to fill in again because this is still really wet. Sure. Yeah, so let me, um, I'm just going to put a little more blue in here to get some of that green that you were asking about. Where is it going to come from? Yeah. Um, yeah. OK. Let's do that. All right, I just take the blue. It might be a little ugly green. Sometimes it's ugly, sometimes it's pretty. I think I'll add a little peacock to it. And that'll help it be lighter or greener, cooler, I guess is the word. There we go. So what we're aiming for in the grand scheme of things is to get a feeling of depth in the water. So you're not just looking at a flat surface, you're looking at um, water, you know, with things, when if it's really a clear stream, you're gonna see down below, you know, just, you're going to see into it, and that's what I want to have happening here. So, okay, there's that. Get that away. Do that. Do this. I'm leaving this alone. I know it looks annoying, and it will until I'm done. So, just be patient. So, I will go and do a dry, and if you want to give a five minute hold on this, Michelle, while I use the hair dryer. Okay, um, you do need to go ahead and uh, mute your computer now. Yep. And then you can use the hair dryer and people if they want to can step away for that uh, um, Coke or glass of wine. And if not, you can go ahead and uh, chat amongst yourselves too. We'll take five. I think it's interesting that she uses the M. Graham paints. I'm not familiar with those, and so the colors that I generally use are different, go by different names. Those are the honey-based paints. 
Another company that uses honey in their paints is Sennelier, a French company. Yeah. Okay, I've heard of them. So does that mean if you lick your paintbrush, it's going to be sweet? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. Hey, Michelle, when I was talking earlier about uh, workshops and something that may be coming up next year, um, the person I've been talking to about doing a weekly, uh, essentially a class that continues for several weeks was Stephen Barry. So um, he, he has a lot of interesting techniques and a lot of experimentation that he does. And so we're trying to figure out how to put together a classroom type of instruction where we meet over maybe five or six weeks for three hours uh, every Saturday. And, uh, and we, he explores those type of techniques while doing some paintings. So that watch for that, because that I, I'm pretty sure we're going to try to put that together. Oh, I like that idea. That would be lovely. Then you can yeah. try things out during the week yeah. and come back with questions the next, uh, the next Saturday and try something new. Uh, Lisa, you asked about where can you sign up for the workshops for 2021. That is on our website. The one that's remaining is Michael Holter. So if you go to californiawatercolor.org uh, and click on the workshop tab, you'll see his workshop. And the 2022 workshops, I'm hoping will be up there in the next 30 days. And we'll send out an announcement to the membership um, when, the, when those workshops are live and you're able to sign up for those workshops. Oh, so, yeah, I just looked at the website and I'm sorry, I meant to write uh, the 2022 workshop. Oh. So they're not, they're not there yet. They're not there yet. It's, uh, we, we've been having some uh, learning curves uh, with the new webmaster and, and uh, we're pretty close. So uh, we should have those up, I'm hoping in 30 days, about 30 days. Okay, and, and uh, this is Michael speaking? Joe, this is Joe. Joe, okay. All right. All right, and thank you. Appreciate it. I will mention that um, we have Michael Holter doing our September general meeting demonstration as well. Um, but it probably you probably don't want to wait that long to sign up because this workshop the following month might be full by then. And he's doing uh, portraits at the workshop. Is that right, Joe? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so maybe maybe he'll demo a portrait uh, for our general meeting as well. Yeah, that would be kind of nice. Okay, I'm done with the drawing. Okay. And um, now I'm gonna really scare you because I'm gonna take the resist off, and you're gonna say, "Oh God, what's she gonna do now?" You probably say that anyway. But here we go. This is the exciting part. Yeah. Like, so what is it going to uh, look like, you know? Yeah. And I'm just using this as a typical one. I think most people use it. Some people use erasers, but I use this one. And if it gets really yucky on the edges, I just take scissors and cut it. And cut some off. And keep on going until it's worn down. So um, you're going to say, oh, geez, look at that. It's weird looking. And it, it will be for a little while because I got work to do to bring it into where I want it to be. So, but the whites, I it want is a little, It is a little weird looking. It is. Maybe. Yeah. No, it's, uh, um, this is important. I have to get this off. Um, every time I do it, it's different. So. What is that you're using to rub it off with? Well, it's just a, it's a piece of, I don't even know what you call this stuff. It's just something you can buy. Um, it's a rubber? Store, and it's just a, it's a resist, it's a resist eraser. It's a rubber cement pickup. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. It's what we used to use when we did mechanical paste up using rubber cement. And you oh, would really? use that to get the little bits of rubber cement off the edge of the type galleys. We're talking a long time ago. 
Yeah. Okay. So um, let me see. Get the rest of this. And then for this point on, it's pretty much a a game of okay. What am I keeping? What am I getting rid of? How much am I going to emphasize? Or are the things that I want to emphasize showing up enough? And if they're not, then I need to go in and make sure that they do. And one of them is this most important point here. So I know that I'm going to be putting in some really strong darks in this area here and here along here. Okay. Um, and so it doesn't really matter if I've if it looks like a mess, and um, I have one at least one to show you that's finished. So if we run out of time, uh, or you get tired of seeing me doodle, um, then <laughs> we'll just call it a night. But anyway, so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, and this one is uh, an Escoda from Barcelona. Um, and it's a synthetic too. And there's still some dampness in here. I could feel it. It's because it still feels a little cold, but it's dry enough that I can work with it now and develop the rest of the scene. I'm not taking it off of here completely yet because mm -hmm. I want to um, add a variety of colors in there. Hmm. So I might as well do that first so that you get the idea of where we're going. And I'll just start with Quinn Gold. And um, I'm just gonna drop it in small spaces, not completely. I wanna save some of those whites, save some of the light uh, yellows. Um, So if you give me like a um, 10 minute time, then I'll, um, if I, depending upon where I am, I'll switch to uh, a finished product. Fair enough. If we're not done. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got another 10 minutes here before you get to that point. Okay. All right. So let's see, um, I'm gonna get this black area settled. That's right in here, and here, this way, goes this way. Um, I want to get rid of some of the light um, so it's not so thick. It has to go down here, in, inside here. And on the other side of it, let's see, come back here. I'm just using what's left on the palette at the moment. I'm not trying to make anything fancy. But the one of the neat things too about doing this is that you can also, you know, you've got all these lines, but you don't need to see them all um, in the final product. You can go over mm -hmm. them like I'm doing right now. So that means some are in front of this piece of grass and um, behind, mm -hmm. in front. Um, and here is going to be a little sharper line. I'm trying to keep my hand from getting into the, into things. Should be really dark there. Here, line here. So the paper is still somewhat damp. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, somebody asked about, oh, can you, I think it was you, Michelle, uh, lift with that brush, the skinny one I was showing you? Yes. After it's dry, and yes, you can, and I'll try to show you that in, when I get to a little further on. So um, I'm gonna mix the colors up a little bit more. It looks like you're giving it more depth now. Yeah. 
and then in the background. To add in more color so that there's light coming through. Um, so um, it's odd. I didn't mention this before, but it seems so strange to do this when you're not in front of people um, on Zoom. But thank God for Zoom, because where would we be without it in terms of our art and our art world over the last, you know, what, year and a half? Yes. Um, yeah. And um, it's been, I think, a godsend for a lot of people, myself included, to be able to reach out to friends and reach out to other artists and be able to take some classes that you may not have been able to do otherwise. Um, so you're continuing your learning experience and you're continuing your connection with friends and artists, uh, artists friends and other friends as too, of course, but um, yeah, I think it's a great thing. But it's weird to be doing it uh, as a demonstrator, at least for me, because in the past, when I've done demonstrations, I've been in f with people in front of me. And for some crazy reason, that is easier. <laughs> huh, I don't know why. <laughs> when you can't see anybody, you don't know who's saying what about you or anything else. Not that that's so important, but just the idea of, you know. You don't, you don't get that that immediate feedback. Oh, there's all these bodies out there and you can't see them. And yeah, it's kind of strange. But anyway. So you use uh, Arches 140 pound rough. Is that correct? That Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what this is. Okay. Do you ever use the uh, 300 pound? I have, but uh, you know, it's expensive and I think that 140 works great just as well. So I don't use it very often, no. I, I actually was in my flat file recently and came across a painting I really like that I must've done 10 years ago. And it turned out it was on 300. And I thought, wow, when was I doing that? You know? No, I, I have some. And it's kind of like I save it in the drawer thinking, oh, someday I'm going to really need that for something really special. I don't know. Someday maybe I will. But in the meantime, it sits there. I know people who use it love it. Uh, I know Ruth Miller uses it all the time, although she complains about the cost. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm comfortable with 140, so that's what I use. Okay, now see this here is gotten very light and I'm going to have to darken it up again just to match it up with that on top. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that'll probably be, I don't want to dip, stay out of the water, Sue. So you get, we've got people saying um, that they uh, really like watching the painting come together. Oh, good. Um, That's good. They're, uh, they're, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Uh, I like it too. <laughs> so I'm glad it, it comes across. That's good. That's good feedback. Um, now, my brush is getting drier and drier because I want to do some skin uh, in here okay. and um, they will add some more depth. Um, I really want to put my finger in that water. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Come on up to Silver Creek and I'll show you we could do it together. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's see. I wonder how many people who are watching it been to, to Idaho, to this part of Idaho, even. It's a pretty place, people. Uh, feel free to unmute and speak up if you have had an experience in Idaho or that part of Idaho. Be fun to hear from you. Be your travel agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, sick brush for a bigger brush for a minute. 
that's thick. Move it down a little bit. Um, still want to get, I have to look back. Oh, okay, Let's see what I have to do. It's, it's interesting to me how uh, effective the uh, resist is in saving those lights in the grasses. That... Yeah. So the, the objective is to get rid of too much graffiti up here. Um, and that takes a while, you know, it's like, I'm gonna have to sit down with it and maybe look at it tomorrow and say, okay, I need more of this and less of that. And so right now, what I'm trying to do is just to come to the bottom and we keep that blue in there, which I'm covering up a little more than I want to, but um, this water light reflection here is not, not doing a very good job with that. Um, Let's see. Oh, no, that red paint just come, keeps coming back to bite me. Oh, well. Bergen O'Connor says, beautiful job and a great demo. Who said that? Bergen O'Connor. She did. Well, thank you, Bergen. That's a compliment. I appreciate it. We're coming from you. Holy moly. Yeah. Can Hi. I say hi? Can you hear me? I can hear somebody. Okay, it's me, Birgit. I just wanted to say I am in, this is fabulous. You've done such a beautiful job here. Wow, thank you so much. I, well, I'm excited watching you. <laughs> really? Wow. Oh, yeah. That's you pretty, know, thank you, Birgit. Well, you know, it's funny is that I just got a piece of gator board today and oh. I never use it. Oh. So it was interesting to watch how you wet the back. Yeah. And, you know, put it on the gator board. I thought that was fantastic. Also, I really love how you're using the, uh, how you're approaching the water and your reeds. And then I went ahead and took a look at your website and um, you've just got some beautiful, beautiful work. Well, thank you so much. That's a really nice treat to hear from you and to hear that. Um, well, I'm honored that you even said that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's very well, kind of you. I have a story for you, Birgit. Okay. When I first started painting, and we're talking in 98 somewhere, and I went over to Marin to one of those art fairs, mm -hmm. and I saw your flowers, and I just thought they were absolutely wonderful. And um, I loved them. And then my son and daughter-in-law came down from Idaho for a Christmas event or something, some sometime when you were doing that. Uh, when those Marin things were going on mm -hmm. and they came home to meet to they were staying with us they came home with your video <laughs> oh, that's they, so funny. and they did not know that I really loved what you were doing <laughs> that is so funny. anything about it yeah oh well, I'm in my own little bubble out here in Bolinas you know yeah. so you just and it was like you're up there in Idaho we kind of just do what we do oh, no. yeah you know, I, you know, I love how you're approaching the water there. It's so now when you're, was that a Ross? That wasn't a Ross Sienna. That was a, a yellow. Um, uh, Quinburn orange and uh, Quinn gold and yellow ochre. Yeah. Those three. Beautiful. I've been using. Um, well, I'm, I'm a transplant. I'm a Bay area girl for my oh. whole life. And oh. uh, you've just lived here for two years now. Oh, wow. It was a bit of a, you know, adjustment, but I think it was the greatest thing. And our fam some of our family's up here, so it really works out well. And uh, I, of course, miss the Bay Area all the time. But you but live, that's a wonderful area up there. And, you, you know, the other thing, um, I sure hope, no, I, I will get out of this in just a second, but I was listening to your uh, thought on how uncomfortable this is to do the online versus the in-person demo. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. just remove the filter. Oops. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. sorry, I thought maybe, it, yeah, just kind of remove the filter and just start talking and everything that you're thinking about comes right out. So yeah. you're doing a fantastic job, it's beautiful. And then I will mute myself so nobody has to listen to me anymore. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Susan. You did a Sue. You did this is gorgeous, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank okay. you. You made my day. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, and um, this is your 10-minute uh, um, warning. Warning. Or, okay. Okay. So I could doodle for a little bit. Ruth Miller says, "Don't doodle too much; it'll put people to sleep." She's right. <laughs> well, we all know and love Ruth. She's always right on target there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's a crazy thing I just did. And I don't like it, so I'm gonna. Uh, Remove it. Put some more glue in there. Oh, Just okay. a reminder to everybody, Birgit O'Connor is going to do the jurying of awards for our national exhibition. Oh, maybe I should enter this. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, she is. I just noticed that the other day. Okay, I think I've done enough to trouble, cause enough trouble here. Um, and now, if I were going to continue, of course, I would spend more time creating the edges that I want here. You can kind of take away something that's right in your face and it looks like it's way too white. Some of these dots are too white or too big. And so you can just paint, put little dots on top of bigger dots and then they'll shrink and then you're, you know, you're good. So how about if I show you a finished one um, and then you can all go home and go to bed, <laughs> take an end to your day. So in a second, I'll do that. One more, one last, oh, damn it. I hate that stuff. What do I do here? Well, we appreciate you're doing so much preparation here so that um, you would have uh, various uh, stages well, that we could see. Like I said, it's, it was like, what do I do? How can I possibly do this in, in an hour and a half? So I did do a try the other day and then I thought, okay, I can make it, but it's gonna have to be fast. So, um, you're going to have to start painting as fast as you run. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> not so fast anymore, but <laughs> uh, hiking. Hiking is good. Yeah. Got plenty of places to hike up here and uh, nice scenery. So um, let's see. Oh, I know. Kat, what. Kat says, I wonder how you address the hard edges from the PBO. Well, you just like, for instance, let me do one here. Um, I'll get rid of it. Um, just put some paint on top of it and let it go. Okay. Um, and then I got a much thinner line there, which I want. And that's, that's good, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can, you can completely cover it up if you want to, or you can, um, well, if, at some point you're going to have somewhat of a hard edge. You can't get them completely gone, but you can minimize them like I'm doing now. And like, for instance, that one is kind of fading away. So is this one. Um, it just depends on how dark you want to get and what uh, kind of effect you want to get from them. Uh, they're certainly good for like, uh, if you want to do a real stylized piece and you want hard edges, I can show you a painting I'm working on that uh, has hard edges if I have time, but I don't think I will, so anyway. Have you ever used a resist pen? Yes, I did. When I first started doing this, I did, and I have one, but I don't think, I, I mean, I haven't found uh, very much success with them. I, okay. They're just kind of a, at least the one brand I had, and I can't even tell you what it was, I, I just felt like it, it had, is a good idea because you can get these really thin lines without having to struggle. But it, <laughs> I, I had trouble with that. I couldn't get them thin enough. So anyway, that's uh, now I know that I didn't take all the resist off of this, uh, this part. And I'm just gonna leave it there for now because time is running out and this is wet. Okay. So I will, grab a couple of versions of this to show you how, how it would turn out. 
So I know I'm going to keep that light blue there because I like it. So anyway, um, let's see. Sue, will you continue to work on this piece um, after the demo? Yeah, I will. Um, it's not complete. It's uh, It's got some work to be done to it. I can uh, maybe I'll do some lifting back. I'll do some covering up. Um, I might do some spattering. In fact, that's what I should do right now. Um, if you send us a, a, a snapshot of it, we'll, we'll include it in the recording. Okay. I'm just going to put a few of these in here and... Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. And then I might, because this one's dry, kind of dry, sometimes you want to have uh, images. Uh, I mean, you want to, you know, let people realize that, oh yeah, this is the top. This is the top of the water. And then there's you know, the rest of it. So mm. if you make too many dots when you're spattering and you don't like where they are, that's the way to do it. So it's like the old deal with if you made a mistake when you were doing something with a, in the sky and you had a dot in the sky, you could turn it into a bird. I don't know if anybody else ever <laughs> that way, but <laughs> when I first started to paint um, and was taking some lessons, that was one thing that guy who was giving the lessons would always tell us, don't worry about that, turn it into a bird. <laughs> so, okay, so this is a, let's see, this is a more completed version. So is it difficult to rub the resist off when the paper is still damp? Pat no, would like to know. no, not really. I mean, I wouldn't do it with soaking wet paper for sure. Yeah, okay. Um, but you can definitely take some of it off when it's, uh, wet, uh, damp, let's say the paper is cool. It's not cold, it's cool-ish. Then that means it's dry enough that you can do that, um, take it off and it, it won't wreck anything. So okay. anyways, this is a more finished version. Get this palette out of the way and then and you can see the of this palette I didn't get to show you that but it's only this big it's, it's like uh well I think I have it written down let's see yeah super nice it's ten and a half by five by seven eighths and it's great it's really lightweight you can throw it in your bag if you want to do plain air and take off and not worry about what's going to happen your paint's not going to leak and it's not going to get dry and it's just really great. Well, you saw me, Michelle, use that when we painted one day. Yes, uh-huh. I yeah. sure did. It's really a nice size, very yeah. portable. So. That's see. beautiful. That's that's beautiful. I want to dip my toe in that water or put my kayak in it or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I've got a number of them here. I'll just try and show you another one. But these are not finished for sure. This one is the closest one this one you see right now, to being finished. Okay. And here's a couple more that are not finished, but they're on their way. And this one, you can see a swash of light in it. That's Mr. Clean. It's oh, not okay. I have left it there. I'll go back and I'm going to do something with it more than what you see. So it's not uh, so obvious, I guess is what I'd like to say. And here's another one. Oh yeah. So, you know, each one yeah. is different. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that, uh, a couple of quotes here, <laughs> just for fun, um, because I'm getting to this place. One of them is, and this was said by a guy named David Taylor. He's an Australian uh, artist. And he says, a painting is better than 90% finished than 120% overworked. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. gotta know when to stop. And, I, I like that. Uh, yeah. And then another one um, is uh, one I like is watercolor is a lifetime pursuit, mostly uphill. So <laughs> <laughs> we're on uphill right now. <laughs> so anyway, um, if that's okay, I think we're done for today. All right, beautiful. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you thanks. so much, Sue. This has been uh, a lovely demo. I know I got a lot out of it and you've got a lot of positive feedback. So 
Thank you so much for uh, taking all your time and effort to do this for us. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I really appreciated it. And thank you so much for asking me to do it. It's been a, a, a good adventure. All right. So thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and I look forward to painting with you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see me? Uh, should I turn this off or are that we... was fantastic? Amazing. Uh, you can just leave it where it is and we'll uh, shut down okay. the meeting very soon. Who said that was fantastic? Was it that was great Pat. job, Sue? Miss you. Yeah, miss you guys. I'll see you a in lot. February. I'm coming. <laughs> Marilyn's just bringing me a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, about Bye. time. <laughs> all right. Uh, good night, all. Thank you for coming out tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm.